the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everybody and welcome back to the course. In this section, section four, we're going to start to take a look at another really important aspect of SharePoint and that is document libraries. So what exactly is a SharePoint document library? Well, we've looked at lists before and we know that lists have headers and records. Now a library is similar. It is basically still a list, but it's a list of documents instead. So let's start out by taking a look at an example that might be a little bit more familiar to you. So I've just opened up File Explorer and I've navigated to a folder. And this is basically the folder that contains all of the videos I'm recording for this course. You'll also see in there right at the top of the list, I have an actual folder. And then towards the bottom, I also have some documents. And the rest of the files in this folder are video files. What you'll also notice here is that we have column headings running across the top, much like a list. Name, status, date, modified, type and size. But instead of records, instead of list items, we have folders and documents instead. So if you can imagine taking this and importing it into SharePoint, that would be a document library. So let's now take a look at one in SharePoint. So I'm back in my SharePoint team site. I'm going to go to the quick launch menu and you can see that I have a documents link just here. So let's click it and take a look at what we have. So this is a document library. Again, I have some column headings running across the top and then underneath I have one folder called general. I can see I've got a PowerPoint presentation, a Word document and two Excel files. So really the only major difference between a list and a library is that a library contains documents and folders as opposed to records. Now, as with lists, there are a few different types of libraries that we can add into SharePoint. And we're going to take a look at some of those in a moment. But before we do that, let's just discuss the types of documents that we can upload into a library. Fortunately, you can pretty much upload anything you like. So you can store PowerPoint, Word and Excel files. You can store PDFs, images, video files, and of course, folders. One of the only types of files that you can't upload into SharePoint are executable files. So anything that has a .exe file extension. And the reason why is because .exes are potentially dangerous to run on the server. And by default, you can upload 50 megabytes worth of a document into a library. Now, if you work at an organization where you have a SharePoint administrator, that is something that they control. So that is a hard limit. If it needs to be raised, then your SharePoint administrator has the ability to do that. But in general, the default is 50 megabytes. Now, again, much like with lists, document libraries are all based off templates as well. And what you're looking at here is the default template for a document library. And this library isn't one that I've added. When you create a brand new SharePoint site, you're going to get a default document library along with that. And it's going to look very similar to what I have here. But of course, we can create our own document libraries as well, much like we could create our own lists. If you take a look at the different menu options that we have running across the top, these are a little bit different to when we're in a list. If I click the new drop down from here, I get something entirely different. This is going to allow me to create a new folder or a completely new document. And creating documents in this way directly from SharePoint harnesses all of the power of the Microsoft 365 online applications. We're going to get more into that a little bit later on. Let's just take a look at a couple of these other options that we have across here. I also have an upload button. So if I have an existing file or folder that I want to upload from my PC into the document library, I can definitely do that from here as well. We have the edit and grid view button. We've seen what that does. We also have a sync button. So if you want to synchronize this document library with OneDrive on your PC so that you can access your files from File Explorer, then you can do that if you want to. You can add a shortcut to this folder in OneDrive from here as well. And you can also export out this information to Excel. Now we're going to get more into these as we go through the course. But the final thing I want to show you in this lesson is just all of the different document libraries that you have access to. 
Now for this, we need to jump back to home from the quick launch menu, back up to new. And if you remember, this is pretty much the same as when we were looking at all of the different list templates. So if I go down to app at the bottom, remember these blue tiles are all related to lists or libraries. So you can see here we have document library, we have forms libraries, wiki page library, and also picture libraries. So if you wanted just a document library for all of the pictures that you're going to be using, then that is the one that you would choose. And that template is going to come with all of the relevant column headings for pictures and images. So as you scroll through, you'll see that you do have quite a few different libraries that you can add into your SharePoint site. Now, if we just click back and go back to that new button, you'll also see aside from going down to app, we can choose document library just here. And if I create a document library in this way, I just need to provide the name, description, and tell SharePoint if I want this to be in the site navigation. This is going to create me just a basic default document library. So it's going to look pretty much exactly the same as this one just here. So let's finish off this lesson by creating a very quick document library. I'm going to go back to home. I'm going to click the new button and I'm going to go down to app and I'm going to add a document library. I need to give my document library a name. So I'm going to create a document library for all of the user guides that I create. So we're going to call this one user guides. Let's expand out those advanced options and take a look at what we have in here. Well, as you would expect, I could add a description. I'm not going to just to save a little bit of time. And then underneath it says create a version each time you edit a file in this document library. Now make sure that you select yes just here because we're going to get on to talking about versions towards the end of this section. And all this means is that if you or somebody else edits a document that's saved into the document library, SharePoint is automatically going to create a new version of that document so you can still retain the original. So let's click the create button and there we go. There is my brand new document library. So I'm very quickly going to add a document to my document library. And this is just going to be a test document. So let's click the new button. I'm going to say I want to create a Word document. It's going to jump me across to Word Online. And again, remember these online versions of the desktop applications are really slimmed down versions. So they're going to allow you to do all the basic things that you'd want to do in Word, but some of the more advanced options aren't available in the online version. You would need to edit in the desktop version. But for what we're doing here, this is absolutely fine. Let's just type in some test text. So I'm going to do a little trick here that all trainers tend to know, and that is the little piece of code to enter in some random text. And there we go. Now, if you take a look up at the heading here, it's telling me that it's now saved. So we don't have to save when we're working in the online version because it automatically saves as we work. And what you'll also notice is that this particular Word document doesn't currently have a name. It just says document. So let's say this is the Word user guide. All I need to do is click away. It's going to rename that file. And as soon as it says saved, I can safely close this down and just give it a couple of minutes and it will update that title. And there is my first document saved to my document library. Now, remember, when you are working in this modern experience and you're creating new libraries, it works the same as new lists. So your new library won't automatically show in the quick launch menu. You have to specify if you want it in there. So let's jump up to the cog button. Let's go down to library settings into list name, description and navigation. And this is pretty much exactly the same as what we do for lists. And we want to make sure we say yes to display this document library on the quick launch and click on save. Perfect. So let's go back to home and make sure that that is showing. And I can see that yes, it is. Now I'm going to leave this one underneath site contents just so I have something separating all of my lists and all of my document libraries. Now that we've seen how to create a document library and I've showed you how you can very simply create a new document and add it to the library, let's take a look at how we upload and add existing files from our PC. Because there are a few different ways that you can do this. The first method you can use is to utilize this upload button. 
So if we click the drop down, I can choose to upload a specific file or files. I can upload an entire folder, which might contain one or many files, or I can upload a template. Now, in this case, I'm going to select files. It's going to open up my local drives and I can then browse to where the file is stored and simply select it. So I have some files that I need to upload in my SharePoint online folder. And I'm going to upload this one just here. It's an Excel document called masterlist.xlsx. Let's click on open, give it a couple of seconds and you'll see that that uploads very quickly. And just remember, if you are uploading a very large document, you might have to wait a few seconds before that will refresh and appear in the library. So that is the first way, very straightforward and very simple. The second way you can upload files into a library is by dragging and dropping. And I will say that this is where the browser that you're using comes into play. I know that for some browsers that are Microsoft browsers, you aren't able to drag and drop files from File Explorer to upload them. So if dragging and dropping is something that you like to do and you're using something other than a Microsoft browser, just have a quick check and see if that works for you. So I'm going to jump back into File Explorer and I'm kind of going to place it up here so I can see my list underneath. And this time I'm going to grab this document just here, Excel User Guide, and I'm simply going to drag it from File Explorer into the blank space in the document library. And you can see as I'm holding the mouse button down, it says copy. When I let go, it's going to copy and upload that file to the library. So that is method number two. Now, the third method you could use to transfer one file or many files is to synchronize your document library with your PC. So currently, I don't have this document library synchronized to File Explorer. You can see I have a personal OneDrive, I have a business OneDrive and some other connections just here, but nothing related to SharePoint. Now, I'm actually going to reorganize my windows here because I want you to be able to see exactly what happens when I click on the sync button in this menu. So now I have File Explorer in the right hand side of the screen and my document library in the right hand side of the screen. Now keep an eye on what happens to my folders in File Explorer once I click sync. So we're going to click the sync button. I'm going to say open. I'm getting a message saying that I'm now syncing SharePoint online training user guides and take a look at File Explorer. It's created essentially a new folder called Train IT Now Limited, which is my company. And if I expand it, there is that folder. And if I click on it, it's going to show me basically everything that I have in this library. So it's essentially like a copy. And what this enables me to do is I basically don't even need to have SharePoint open to upload files. What I could do is open up another File Explorer window. And let's put that in this side of the screen. And if I now want to upload another file, so something like this one just here, this PDF, all I need to do is drag and drop it into the File Explorer folder. So I'm going to grab House Styles and Branding drag, drop, you can see it's now moved. And if we go back to our SharePoint site, you can see that it's not there just yet. Sometimes you might have to refresh your browser just to get that to update a little bit quicker. Now I've done that, there is the document. So those are your three methods. You can click the upload button, you can drag and drop, or you can synchronize the library to your local PC and work within File Explorer. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.